Bonjour, my name is Louis Jolet. In this video, I will tell you about myself, my explorations, and some facts about exploring in my time. I look something like this, but some people think I look something like this. But for the purpose of this video, you may assume I look like this. Wait, hold on. The video director wants me to stop my accent so you can actually understand what I'm saying. I was born in the mid 17th century around the Quebec New France settlement to my parents, Marie de Abrincourt and Jean Jolet. I was baptized on September 21st, 1645. I went to a Catholic school as a child and focused on philosophy and religious studies. I planned to be a priest, but I also studied music and became a very good har harpicordist and church organist. My stepfather was a wealthy merchant, and both of my brothers were traders. So at the age of 23, I decided to leave the seminary to become a fur trader. In 1673, I embarked on my first major expedition with Jacques Marquet a missionary who was fluent in many languages. We were among the first Europeans to explore the Mississippi River with hopes of finding a passage to Asia. We had only been traveling about a month when we came upon a native village in the Illinois area and were hosted by the tribe's chief. The chief sent his son with the group as a guide along with a peace pipe to help keep us safe. We eventually came upon a native tribe ready to attack us near the region that would be known as St. Louis. After seeing the peace pipe, however, the tribe took us into their village and revealed that there were armed Europeans further along the Mississippi. Marquette and I realized that these were Spanish settlers at the Gulf of Mexico and that the Mississippi did not lead to Asia. Darn shame after all that work. We decided to turn around to avoid conflict and capture. Along the way back, the young native guide showed us a shorter route home by taking the Illinois River. Marquette and I split up in 1674 on the way back to Quebec. I took a shortcut through the rapids of the, the Chain along the St. Lawrence. As bad luck would have it, I underestimated the rapids and my canoe capsized, taking the lives of the additional pa passengers, including the chief's son. In hindsight, perhaps I shouldn't have been standing up in the canoe, no matter how much better it looks in pictures. Well, after hanging on about four hours to a rock, the Divine Mother Mary sent a fisherman who saved me. Unfortunately, all of my maps, journals, and documents recording my trip were lost. While I recomposed some notes of the journey from memory, Mark Hetz's recovered notes became the more relied upon resource. Whew, that took longer than I thought, but that was my most memorable exploration. We're kind of running out of time, so let me see if I can get through the rest a little quicker. At the behest of French colonists in 1697, I took another exploratory mission to better understand the value of the Hudson Bay Territory. I discovered that, voila, this area was the most rich in fur resources that I had ever seen. The French needed to secure these resources for ourselves. My final voyage of note was to make detailed maps and observations of the Labrador coast. Following this trip, I was named a hydrography teacher at the University of Quebec. I died in 1700. It was very sad. But before I go, let me share a few more things with you. Some things from the old world we brought for trade include worked metal weapons like rifles, knives, hatchets, and axes, glass beads, very popular for trading, and woven cloths. What did we need in return? Harvested and prepared foods like corns, beans, squash, pumpkins, dried meat, fish, acorns, and berries, fish, and most importantly to the use of the French colonist, furs such as beaver, mink, otter, meriton, fox, deer, and bison. But why should we bother exploring? The French have several political, economical, and cultural reasons for exploring. The Spanish, English, and Dutch success in exploration and improving their 
economies through new trade ventures made the French eager to keep up in their race to explore the New World. The French weren't as interested in relocating its people in the New World, but they were interested in the resources it could provide them. By actively engaging the Native Americans in the trade, they brought the Americans wealth as they got resources they wanted. By shooting guns for goods, they, they also brought the Native Americans they traded with power among their rival tribes. Besides sailors, fishermen, and fur traders, the largest number of French colonists who went and explored the New World for France were priests and missionaries who wanted to convert the natives. To do this, they learned the local languages. This gave them additional credibility with the natives and assisted them with building the French political influence in the area, as well as bringing French culture and their religion to the natives. So I have gone on long enough. That is my life, and I trust you. I have answered all of the questions required for my director to get an A. Au revoir!